Hi, hello everyone. Um, thanks again for joining this session. So today we will talk about how to create awesome polyglot applications using GraalVM. Um, quick introduction before we go further. Uh, my name is Oez Ayat. I'm a software development manager at Autodesk. Uh, I have over 14 years of experience working uh, around the globe. My main focus area is uh, cloud platforms, creating cloud products and services with an emphasis on resiliency and uh, scalability. Um, oh, I'm moving forward. Okay, so um, JavaScript is my main forte, and uh, I love football, and like hopelessly in love with AS Roma. Nothing much to say about them this season. Um, didn't make it to Champions League. Um, let go of Derossi, so I'm not gonna say too much about them. So you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, the handles are there. Okay, so, all right, settle down, settle down. Okay, so back to the main topic. When we talk about interoperability or language in, um, or polyglot applications, there are a lot of frameworks or ways out there that can help you do that. I started looking into Graal VM a uh, few months ago. Um, when I was uh, trying to evaluate a messaging SDK created by another team in Autodesk using Java. And my team mainly works in Ruby and Node.js. So if you think about this scenario, um, uh, it's not like something that is like uh, very unique, where people will say, oh, geez, what are the odds? Like something like this is happening. In fact, if you look at uh, the, in the enterprise setting, usually the development work is done by multiple agile teams. And more often than not, they choose different tools and technology for their respective work. Sometimes based on their uh, preference or sometimes based on the problem they are trying to solve. Um, for example, um, people tend to use Python for machine learning applications or R for data science. And if you are creating a solution that needs both of them, then you will come across something like that. So it is common to come across this problem. So I started looking into various options of interoperability. Again, there are a lot of frameworks and ways out there that can help you do that. Um, some are using like language neutral mechanism or interfaces to allow interaction, um, just like Apache Thrift or Swig. Um, and then you have some libraries that are either specific to uh, language, platform, or mainly focuses on bridging gap between native and managed code, like JNI or JNA. <coughs> and then uh, cloud platforms are also, also trying a few things. Uh, recently, AWS, they introduced layers with their uh, Lambda service. So you can create your layer in a different language. And then I came across Graal VM. So Graal VM um, has a new, has a kind of a unique approach to uh, solving this problem. No interface files, um, thriving ecosystem of supported languages, and very, a very clean approach to creating polyglot applications. So let's start with that. What is Graal VM? So Graal VM is uh, a polyglot multilingual virtual machine. Uh, it provides a common stack for applications running in Java, Python, R, Node.js, C++, and many more. And having this common stack actually enables it to provide interoperability in a shared runtime. So <clears throat> to look at like what Graal has to offer, let's look at this, uh, uh, this holistic picture. So, it shows the languages supported. You can see the stack, and you can see the components. Again, there's a lot going on here. So let's take a stab at it one component at a time. And I will start right from the middle, from the heart, which is Graal compiler. Um, the only, Graal compiler is probably the most important aspect of Graal VM. Um, the only difference between uh, a JVM, which is a hotspot JVM, and Graal VM is the fact that Graal 
VM uses Graal compiler as, as a JIT compiler and also as a ahead of time compiler as well. But let's focus on the JVM part first. So as we know that in the hotspot JVM, we have uh, two JIT compilers, uh, C1, C2. We can also call them client and server uh, compilers as well. So both of these compilers, they have uh, different tech, JIT uh, compilation techniques, and they can generate different uh, machine code for the same Java method. Uh, Java applications, the modern ones, usually make use of both of them, which is called tiered compilation. And um, in the tiered compilation, you start with C1 or client compiler at the start, and then once your application is properly warmed up, then C2 compiler kicks in for more aggressive optimizations and better performance. So <clears throat> now the question is, since we already have the JIT compilers, and they are working fine. So the question is why there is a need to come up with another new compiler, which is a pretty valid question. Um, to start with, Graal compiler is written in, in Java as compared to C1, C2 compilers, which are written in um, C. Uh, there are known issues with the current implementations of, uh, of JIT compilers. And optimization in the context of strongly type managed languages can be done better. So again, this is a huge and a separate topic in itself, like why it makes sense to have uh, a Graal compiler or a compiler written in, in, uh, in Java. Uh, there's a link in the QR code here. If you guys want to know more about the details of it, I would highly recommend you to go through it. Uh, not now, but after the session, of course. So. <clears throat> The reason it is possible for us to use Graal compiler or any other compiler um, uh, in the VM ecosystem is thanks to JVMCI, which is Java Virtual Machine Compiler Interface. So that actually allows the external compilers to be able to uh, perform the JIT compilation. And it looks something like this. Um, so, what are the benefits of having an external crawl compiler? So I can give you three today. Number one, uh, it is much more maintainable and has a lower barrier of, of, of entry. Um, you can hack around easily, it's in Java, so chances are more and more people will contribute to it. Uh, the second is it is loosely coupled. Uh, it is not tied up with a virtual machine. Uh, you can use Graal compiler as a head of time compile, uh, compiler as well, and for other purposes as well. And third, it, has a, it is optimized for truffle-based languages. So truffle is the layer above uh, uh, Graal compiler. So let's talk about what truffle is. So truffle is the language implementation framework um, provided by Graal VM. It sits on top of uh, Graal compiler. It actually interprets your languages uh, uh, using abstract sy syntax tree, AST. And the Graal compiler is actually optimized, like it, it actually sort of optimized to work with uh, the truffle based interpretations. So it, it, uh, it actually performs partial evaluation of these um, abstract syntax, syntax tree. And the result is pretty much on par with the standard runtimes. Um, currently, the uh, tr Truffle implementation support Ruby, R, Python, Node, LLVM. And it has a really nice documentation if you want to provision new language. All right, so another sort of, so if you, I mean, if, if I over, sim, if, if I like simplify this whole thing, like what Truffle is, I know like these are, I'm throwing a lot of new jargons at you, like crawl and all the Truffle and everything. But if you look at it from the uh, developer or Java developer point of view, uh, Truffle, the any guest language implementation that you will develop using this framework will uh, practically be a Java, Java application a Java application of your runtime that will run on your JVM. So <clears throat> there are two advantages of having like a framework like Truffle to 
create your language implementations. Number one, uh, you can run your Ruby or Node.js or Python and all the different C++ code within JVM. So, and this means you can use Java objects and you can also leverage the tools provided by JVM. So this is a huge benefit. And the second thing is uh, with tr Truffle actually contains uh, a polyglot uh, interoperability uh, protocol that actually allows you to talk to other truffle based implement uh, truffle based implemented language uh, um, easily in a very clean way so a, it provides a low overhead interoperability between languages we will see this thing in action in the demo later so <clears throat> sulong is one of the implementations of uh, truffle uh, uh, sulong is actually a llvm um, a low level virtual machine interpreter uh, to support C++ or any other language that can be compiled into LLVM bitcode uh, using any of the front ends like Clang or Ruby. So if, if any of you uh, sort of is interested in uh, the managed to native route where you want to use C, C++ or, or any LLVM based languages into Java, then this is the area you should be looking at. All right, so ahead of time compilation. So Emmanuel talked about this thing in the, in the session uh, just before that. So ahead of, uh, Graal also supports ahead of time compilation. It comes with a tool called native image that actually compiles the code into native executable. So the resultant native executable doesn't uh, run on uh, JVM. It runs on a different kind of a virtual machine called Substrate VM, as you can see it here. Substrate v uh, virtual machine has a limited uh, thread support and memory management. It is not the full-fledged JVM. And it is optimized to uh, execute ahead of time compilation uh, uh, executables. All right, so, uh, all right, so native image actually, uh, when it is building your image, actually use Graal VM uh, for compilation. And um, it is important to know that uh, uh, ahead of time compilation uses uh, aggressive static uh, 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 analysis, so th in the closed world assumption so that all the classes that your execution path will touch um, should uh, must be known at the compile time and uh, yeah so on the downside of it you cannot do dynamic uh, programming or you cannot do dynamic uh, class loading in ahead of time compilation and but you can also also do polyglot uh, there is a provision of using uh, polyglot applications truffle based uh, languages in your um, native image, but you can only create the native image for JVM based applications like Java, uh, Scala, Clojure, Kotlin. Um, you cannot create a native image for a truffle based um, implementations yet. All right, so again, the advantage, the biggest advantage that you will get with ahead of time compilation is. Um, the, uh, the quick, the reduced startup time, the application will start really quickly and the uh, lower uh, memory footprint. Uh, again, so there is a comparison between running your code in ahead of time comp uh, mode or in JVM. Uh, JVM, if you are running your applications in JVM, it usually starts slow, but has a better peak performance if your process is a long running process. But if, you, if your application is, is a sort of design in such a way that you don't need to run it in a sort of a, as a long process, maybe as a cloud function where it just execute based on, like you're just spawning it and then you are just killing your process, then maybe ahead of time compilation is a better option for you. Okay, all right. <clears throat> So it is important to know that in Graal, we have two execution modes. Um, 
JVM and native. JVM, as the name suggests, will run your code in JVM and use the Graal compiler as C2 compiler. And in native, it actually uses the native image to ex execute your code. So again, the pros and cons of both is their uh, native will start really fast as compared to JVM, but JVM has a better peak performance. So we will look at both of these modes uh, in action in demo later on. All right, so <clears throat> now that so far, now that we know like what Graal VM is, what, what it has to offer, and uh, uh, what are the different components and the language supported, now the question is, uh, should you be using Graal VM? Or uh, should you be using the truffle-based implementations of Ruby, Python, R over the standard ones? So, I mean, that was the same question um, I asked myself when I started looking into Graal VM. Like, what is the benefit? Like, how I can quantify it? So, um, to find some answers, I ran a few benchmarks. Uh, both that are defined on the Graal VM site and the others. You just can't trust the benchmarks defined on the websites these days. So usually they will showcase the benchmarks which is in favor of them. But I try to sort of find all the different benchmarks to see that how it is working. So let me share some of the results with you. So the first test I did is the embedded templating. Um, so I use, uh, the, the comparison is between JRuby and Truffle Ruby. And uh, the uh, measurement criteria is IPS, uh, instructions per second. So in the first test, Truffle Ruby wins hands down, like no questions asked. So it's way, uh, the performance is really, really good, which is nice. So first round goes to uh, Graal. Second, so the second test I did is the base64. I took a really big string and I did encoding and decoding of it in a loop of 1,000. So in that case, um, JRuby was kind of on par, but still Truffle Ruby wins it. So two on two to Graal. It's the same measuring criteria of IPS. Now in the in the third uh, benchmark that I ran, I used the JSON benchmark. So I took a really big JSON file and then I tried to parse it. And then uh, the parse result, I tried to calculate some of the numbers from it. So in this situation, the, the execution time, I used the measuring criteria of execution time, not IPS. This time around, JRuby was really fast. Like, it just blown away, truffle. And uh, you can see the huge difference here. But this time around, since we are uh, talking about polyglot, I, I sort of take a, another step. I, see, I try to experiment with it to see that what will happen if I take my truffle Ruby code and I replace the parse method and use the JavaScript parse, parse method instead and see how it works. So when I did that, interestingly, the, I got a real, at least a better execution time from it. Again, it's not as good as the JRuby implementation, but at least better than the Truffle Ruby. But uh, <clears throat> I noticed one thing while I was sort of uh, running this benchmark, is that uh, this comparison is kind of bit, uh, sort of not at the same level playing ground maybe because uh, I'm running the JVM, uh, J JRuby code in, on their standard runtime, but on the Truffle Ruby and the, uh, the Truffle Ruby polyglot, I'm running it on JVM. And we all know that JVM is, if you run your code on JVM, it starts a bit slow. So I want to check like what will happen, what will be the result if I run the same exact code in the second mode that Graal has to offer, which, which is native. And these are the results. So I took the same code, and then I run it in the native mode. So I got a better performance from the Truffle Ruby first. So it was not nine or 10 seconds. It came down to around like six or seven seconds. But when I did the same thing with the 
Truffle, Node.js, Polyglot, I got a performance even better than uh, the one at, uh, that JRuby has to offer. So third round is kind of a draw, I can say, maybe. Uh, so JRuby wins, but we did a mix and match, and then Graal wins. So, <clears throat> but there are a lot of other benchmarks available that you can run. I have few benchmarks in my uh, GitHub repo that you can check. Um, and these are all available. And I have created uh, the Docker container for it. So you don't need to set up GraalVM on your machine. You can just run and you can just check the numbers on your machine to see whether it, it is something similar or not. Ideally, it should be. Um, so, um, other, so I just gave you three examples. But there are a lot of, uh, in the Graal community, a lot of people actually ran different kind of benchmarks. And the overall result is that the Truffle implementations show very promising results. There are few hiccups here and there, but overall it looks pretty solid. So <clears throat> this is like my first kind of a um, touch of creating mix and match kind of applications or polyglot applications. So that would be my first demo of the day. We will look at the same uh, Truffle node benchmark that um, uh, we discussed. All right, so let's look at, um, OK. Cool. So this is the main benchmark code for JSON. Very, very simple code. Um, just I'm taking a file and then parsing it and then just looping through the coordinates and uh, uh, kind of aggregating it. So the important thing here to notice is, so this is the exact same code that I'm running in JRuby. So JRuby and Truffle Ruby code is same. Um, so now if, if I want to make this a polyglot, this is how it will look like. Sorry, this one. So notice that there are only two lines that are changed now. And the rest of the code is exactly the same. So the first thing that you notice is that now I'm not using um, the Ruby uh, parse method. But instead of, you see something like polyglot.eval. So polyglot is actually one of the objects uh, in the Truffle implementation. All the Truffle implementation uh, languages, they actually implement this polyglot. So polyglot is a way to actually talk to different languages in the Truffle-based implementations. So what this line is actually doing, it is evaluating a json.parse method in a, in a guest language. And this for, in my code, the guest language is JavaScript. So this is the ID of the language. So you can do the same thing with R, with Python, with anything. And then I'm just passing that information to my, the JSON parse method and then getting the result. And the result that I will get will be, um, um, uh, is a foreign object uh, because it is coming from the outside world. So um, I need, and since this is the JSON, I know it is enumerable, so you need to sort of use this method as enumerable and then get all the arrays and then go over it. Uh, and you can uh, you can write like any code there. It's, it's just one line, but if you, I can show you the Python code. So this is the exact same thing for Python, if you want to do, do it in Python. So the ID will change to Python and you are importing the JSON. So all the code which is inside the string will actually run in a guest language. So, and then you will get the foreign object and then you can play with that foreign object. Uh, yeah. So all the language will be called like guest language or what is the host language? So host language here is Ruby. As you can see, this is the Ruby code. So, but if, if you want to use Python, then you can start with this. So this piece of code will run by in Python. 
and then you will get the, res uh, the result um, and you can play with it. So that's how that polyglot application is working and you can create as many different, so every time you create a polyglot eval, it actually create a context and then um, you can have multiple contexts in your language as well, uh, in your code. So I can, I can start with uh, doing something with Python and then go to R and then do Node.js and then do mix and match. So uh, this is where uh, you need to know like which language will give you the most benefits. And it's not just eval, eval is just an example I use here. If you look at the documentation, you can also sort of load the files. So you can say eval file. So, and, or you can also export some objects to it so that uh, if you want to sort of uh, work with a library which is in Python. So this is a very simplified version, but if you are working with the libraries, let's say you have a library in Python which is pretty awesome for uh, machine learning and you want to just use it in your Ruby, for example. So you will pass some of the, uh, you will export some objects and let that library play with it and then it can give you the results. So uh, in, th in these scenarios, it can be really uh, useful. So uh, for example, can I call a method like in Java, in one, one class, one object, mm -hmm. from like Yeah, so just wait for the second demo. I will do exactly the same thing. So um, cool. Um, so the reason I'm sort of, I'm trying to sort of build the complexity. So I'm, let's start with the basic one. So now we are establishing the fact that in Graal VM, we can start creating these kind of solutions where you are not confined to a single language. So you can start sort of, going around and like calling different math, uh, functions of different methods. All right, so l let's start running it just to see whether the numbers are matching or not. Okay, uh, I need to check. You guys see it, right? Okay, great. So I am in this right folder. So if I need to run it, so what I will do, I will say Ruby. Let's run it in the JVM mode first. So that's how you are uh, telling uh, your Ruby runtime that you need to execute your code in the JVM mode. And you also tell your, uh, your runtime that, hey, I'm probably using some guest implementations in it as well. Uh, and then uh, these two, let me write it first. These two uh, options, the uh, command line options, you only need to add when you are using um, when you are using uh, Node.js or JavaScript uh, as a guest language, because we all know like JavaScript is a single-threaded uh, uh, based on single-threaded uh, model. So you need to express this thing uh, so that uh, the uh, the runtime can take care of it. And let me run it. So this is the time comparison. Yeah, so around, it takes this one, one-ish seconds. So if I do the same thing with native, ideally it should take less time. Okay, so notice the difference. Uh, it runs really fast. All right, so, okay, so, so far we have uh, just, we mainly talked about benchmarks. So let's go beyond benchmarks and talk about some real world problems. So this, uh, the second demo I will show is a over sort of simplified um, messaging service. So I have a messaging server in Java and then I have uh, the receiver of that notification in Node.js. But again, you can do that with any combination. So let's look at this one. So I have this Java code I have created. Uh, 
very simple notification service. It just uh, it create a thread and um, sort of periodically add a random number to a queue. Uh, again, I mean you can over complicate this thing with having like actual objects coming from some notification service. And then I have a receiver which is uh, Node.js and it is using uh, worker threads and worker threads is actually uh, kind of uh, pulling from the queue and extracting the random number. And you can, you can create n number of workers. So the most important part here is this one. So here what I'm doing, I'm actually using a Java in Node.js. So this line, the line number 30, I'm actually saying, hey, Java, um, I, uh, can you create an object of link block, blocking queue? Because since I'm using the worker threads, I want to make sure that the access is concurrent, but you can use any kind of queue. But the important thing is here is you are using Java directly. And you can, you can do that because your uh, application is running in JVM. So it, it can access all the Java objects. And again, you don't need a polyglot uh, object for it because um, polyglot objects is mainly for the interaction with other Truffle-based languages. But if you want to talk to the JVM uh, languages, you can just directly uh, call them. So I created a queue, I set up my worker threads, and then I actually um, uh, create an instance of my notification service. So, <clears throat> so now this is much more relevant, right? And uh, we can execute this thing right away. Uh, to do that, I would first need to compile my uh, notification server. Uh, Java C. All right, and then in the Node.js, um, I will say, hey, I want to run it in JVM because I want to use Java objects, and um, since I'm using, um, uh, since I'm using uh, worker threads. Uh, and in the version that I have installed, it's, it's still experimental, so you need to enable it. And then uh, you can just use notification receiver. And ideally it should work. Oh yeah, again, so you can see it working. The, the main reason is like I have the Java class within the same package, so by default the, the, the uh, uh, from where you are executing the code, the class path contains that. But if you, your file or libraries are in some other place, then you can pass that command line option of a class path saying that, hey, your classes or your jar file is sort of sitting somewhere else. So you can access from there. Um, so uh, yeah, so now there is a potential of creating much more complicated solutions in Graal. It gives you a power like now you can use Java, you can use other Truffle-based languages. So, uh, and this is, this is actually sort of when, when I started working on this thing, that actually sort of gave me uh, some kind of a hope that, hey, maybe, you know, we can, we can, we can do something about uh, with, with Graal VM. And that's exactly what I did. So, I started this, uh, this session um, by sharing a, like a true story that the whole reason I started with Graal VM is that um, I was trying to evaluate um, um, a mes messaging SDK written by another team in Autodesk uh, in Java. And um, uh, so they, their main code was in Java and then they created uh, the polyglot SDKs like in, uh, using Thrift. Uh, but their main source of truth is in Java. So that whole idea of Graal came to me when I said, hey, I, why should I wait for them to come up with the Ruby-based SDK or Node.js-based SDK? Why not I just use the, their main source Java SDK? So, <clears throat> and um, this is what I, uh, what I did and it actually worked. So I cannot run the demo for this one because it's kind of internal 
it requires all the setting up the um, uh, the Autodesk network related services. So I recorded that demo for you. So the first one I used the Java SDK that um, the CSE V2 SDK uh, that their team worked on. I just took that jar file and created a solution in Ruby for it. So let's see how it works. Um, so I tested this thing in my dev environment, worked like a charm. I'm not using this thing on production right now. So just full disclosure. Okay, so for, for demo, I just, uh, I use uh, Docker container. So you can see that it is, uh, it's a messaging queue. It's a, someone is actually producing the events and someone is listening uh, to it. So you can see the producer uh, uh, sending the events, and then you can start seeing the consumer receiving the events. Not the be most beautiful application you have seen in your in your life, but it works. Uh, the second, but again, f with Ruby, I got the the feedback that hey, I mean, if you are running JRuby, you can always talk to Java. I mean, you are not doing something like earth shattering that oh yeah, it's like the next level thing. Um, and uh, which is true, like if you are running JRuby, then you can talk to Java. Um, uh, so there is a scripting um, uh, libraries and gems there that can help you do that. But this one is interesting because uh, my team also works in Node.js and if Node.js is talking to Java, that's pretty awesome. So <clears throat> this one, um, in the last one, I have the threads, one thread producing and one thread, thread receiving. This one I just created two, uh, two, one producing and one consuming, but the result is pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, I'm just building a Docker and then run. I will run it. Uh, come on. So you can see the producer. Uh, producing it and then you start sort of receiving it. So uh, there, there are sort of relevance of Graal VM. You can, you can create these kind of solutions, uh, and then, um, and it, 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 it is pretty practical uh, based on based on my evaluation. All right. So the last demo of the day. This one, I will sort of try to move slightly away from uh, the polyglot applications and talk about optimization. Um, again, the golden words from uh, Greg Rick, you can't optimize uh, what you can't measure. So um, Graal comes up with a lot of different tools uh, that are pretty nifty that can be useful if you are working because if you're creating a polyglot application, you need to start with uh, some kind of analysis or maybe some kind of a data. I mean, how do you know? Like, uh, let's say if, if you are taking the first demo in which I just replace the parse method to JavaScript, the question that you can ask me that, why you replace that particular method? Why, is it like your best guess? And why you choose JavaScript? Why not the other implementations available like Python or R? I mean, why you did that? So if, if you are sort of into that optimization part, not as much of utilizing the existing libraries out there in some other language, then you need to use some of the tools available in Graal to actually do some analysis. And um, <clears throat> they have the different uh, tools like, uh, we can first start with, uh, uh, with profiling tools. And maybe we can use the same example of uh, uh, the the demo one. Okay, just give me a second. All right. So uh, the profilers available on the Graal is you can use the C uh, CPU sampler, you can use uh, the CPU tracer or memory tracer. Um, I will start with CPU sampler because it's 
it will give you the the results that you are looking for but if you want like much more detail then you can go for C, uh, cpu tracing and then if you are into memory management then you can use memory tracing um, all right so let's look at the truffle first so i want to so if i want to optimize the truffle i want to know where it is taking uh, if, if i'm executing that code which method or which particular statement is taking too much time because we have seen that it uh, the overall truffle execution is taking around 1 to 2 seconds uh, compared to uh, um, sorry it is taking 4 seconds as compared to the polyglot example so if i if i want to do that then let's uh, let's run this thing i can say that hey i want to uh, run ruby and let's uh, run it in JVM mode. And um, I can use CPU sampler. And I want to sample on statements. And I want to use uh, profiler. I don't know whether it will work or not, but let's see. All right, okay, so you, you get this histogram. So the important thing here to know is that, notice that two second-ish uh, piece of code, which is line number three. Let's go there. Okay, so I know that this is the main culprit. So we are we are coming to certain sort of a idea that okay this is the statement i need to optimize this is the problem problematic part in my code um and uh, how do i know that uh, the uh, node.js parser is working uh, or it's it's like then you can do the same thing with the uh, with the polyglot application and do the sampling and compare the results so, uh, or you can do the same thing with Python, with others, and then, I mean, that's how you will start doing the optimization part. So, this is something that uh, I found really useful. Um, if you are mainly into the optimization uh, part and still using CrawlVM. And uh, uh, it, it also contain uh, uh, debugging support, so you can inspect your code in the Chrome development tool. So, which is pretty handy, especially if you are coming from the full stack background and you are pretty comfortable doing that uh, script debugging of no, of JavaScript on uh, the Chrome developer tool, then it will be pretty easy for you to sort of do the same thing there. Um, we, we can do that uh, for one of the other samples like this. I can say, hey, um, inspect break so it gives you this uh, link that you can open in your and you can debug so it it it's it looks pretty cool to me i mean uh, most of the time i do that on the for the front end uh, javascript debugging so that that's pretty neat. All right, so <clears throat> there you have it. Um, so we have seen four demos, and honestly, not enough. Uh, the truth, the the fact of the matter is, like we have barely scratched the surface of what GraalVM has to offer. But I'm sure uh, after looking at these demos and just going through the whole session, at least we can establish the fact that GraalVM is a viable option when it comes to creating polyglot applications. So I'm, so I, as I said, like I started looking into Graal few months ago, so not an expert at all. Um, so I'm, whatever I have uh, like sh uh, shown you guys is mainly based on my sort of personal experience and mis misadventures with, with GraalVM and like talking to community like uh, 
sort of poking them and you know, all from time to time. Um, so these are some of the lesson learned so far. Uh, still a long way to go. So Graal VM, uh, especially in the context of polyglot applications, I'm not talking about ahead of time compilation, but especially in the context of uh, polyglot uh, applications, I think it is better suited for um, the case where you have some custom code or libraries or SDKs in some other language and you want to use them. Um, I, uh, the second thing I notice is like there are still some performance gaps um, between the standard uh, execution, like standard runtimes for Ruby especially, and the truffle based implementation. Uh, but the community is sort of pretty active. Like if you raise any issues, they actually fix them. Um, I struggled with uh, running um, crawl on uh, Java 8. Um, so some of their standard Docker images that they provide is based on Java 8. But I think if you are experimenting with uh, with crawl VM, I would recommend you to use uh, Java 10 plus. I think it has a much better support for containers and I, since of course like usually in most of the development that people do usually create some containers around it. So I think better to go with Java 10 plus. And the fourth thing is that uh, I don't see a lot of examples of Graal VM as of now in production. Uh, we know that Twitter is using it. Um, uh, we saw Emmanuel showcase the Qu Quares, I, I'm still struggling with that name. So, um, but again, I don't see a lot of uh, uh, like uh, examples where people are sort of using it uh, in production. So hopefully this will change in, in future. Um, yeah, and these are all the references. Um, I can share these references on my Twitter as well if anyone wants to look at it. Uh, the, the GitHub repos, some of the, like some of uh, the one that uh, I created is there as well. Um, there are some uh, open JDK uh, uh, links that you can go through to know more about JVM CI and ahead of time compilation and some of the research papers uh, that might be useful to actually understand uh, the truffle and graal relationship and what truffle uh, the nitty gritties and like under the hood sort of everything of truffle all right so i think with that that's all i have thank you cool any questions yes Um, I, I, I can't hear you. Any, do we? Uh-huh. Uh, as you displayed in that screen, uh, does it need Python running on that machine? Does yes. Does it need uh, Python running on that machine? To yeah, so that's a good question. So uh, the question here is if we are running multiple applications, uh, like if we are using Python as a host, uh, as a guest implementation, then it has to run somewhere, right? So what I, so that's what I uh, said uh, while I was explaining Truffle. Imagine these things as Java applications. So you have one Java application for Ruby, which is your Ruby runtime and you, ha you will have another one for Python, right? So Python runtime. So what will happen when you run your Ruby code, what is happening? It is actually loading your uh, Ruby runtime into JVM first, right? And then when you see, hey, it, there is a polyglot. And then when, uh, uh, when the compiler looks into your code and it sees that, okay, it is using Python as well. So it actually loads the Python runtime into JVM as well. So when you use polyglot applications, and uh, let's say if uh, you, you create a polyglot of Ruby, 
with Node.js and with Python and with R, then all of these runtimes will be loaded in JVM. Because that's how it will actually interpret, or else, I mean, how do you evaluate what, whatever is written in, in Python or R? So again, this is something that uh, will probably impact the memory it will take. So maybe uh, one of the optimizations or maybe analysis that you can do if you are creating a polyglot application is to do the memory tracing to see like uh, if you're creating a polyglot application, how much memory it is taking. So a standalone Ruby uh, application or a polyglot application, if you compare the memory will be, uh, uh, it will take more memory because it is loading more code in your JVM. So yeah, and this is this exactly the same for the native uh, native uh, uh, mode as well. Because in the native mode, it, it actually sort of loads the native executable of your runtime, and then loads it and make it part of your uh, overall uh, ahead of time compilation. Uh, like the Java level, we are having a selective kind of uh, JVM products which will picked up based upon the kind of things you're importing into over there. Could the same thing be done for this uh, level VM where you have a selective classes or selective kind of environment to be picked up over there in uh, JVM so that memory won't be an issue? Uh, so the way I've seen it uh, working is that uh, first, if you're using uh, Java 11 or 12, whatever, so the first thing that you need to do is to establish the fact that you need to use a Graal compiler because none of these things, the polyglot will not gonna work if you are not running Graal compiler because Graal compiler is the main thing that actually connects the Truffle implementations and that's how it sort of get interpreted. So you first thing that you need to do if you are using Java 12 is to tell that you are enabling the JVM CI and sort of using Graal. So that's one thing. The other thing that uh, people are doing is that to optimize few things and memory management uh, with uh, from Java 10 plus, you can mention the ahead of time compilation classes or paths as well. So you can say that, hey, these are the compiled already things there that you can add. Or selectively choosing which classes can uh, be compiled. It's, I don't know, sorry. Okay. So maybe I think that, that, that might be a little bit about the optimization. Maybe, sorry. Right now, it looks like the way MDS Java, you see a Python, or Ruby, so everything will be, you know, loaded at compile time. So, okay, so performance it in which sense you are saying? Uh, the startup time will be? Yeah. Yeah, so this is something, see, again, um, this is where you need to. Uh, decide based on the scenario that you are working on. I mean, uh, you will not be creating like happy polyglot application just for the sake of it, like having 10 applications just running. So if you, and again, with the with this microservices based architecture, you will have a very smaller kind of a use cases anyways. So I don't see a scenario in which you will come up with a scenario where you will have probably two or three uh, languages talking to a single base language. If, if your code is uh, written in such a way where it is sort of talking to a lot of different languages, then that is probably the first conversation would be to sort of break it down into a smaller ones to start with. Uh, we just started with the podcast. Yeah. I think they also, they have something like, you can mention that you're not compiling which Yeah, so um, that is sort of a, again, so, that session mainly focuses on ahead of time compiled native executable part. Uh, it is not sort of uh, talking about the polyglot aspects of it. Of course, I mean, if you are creating a Java application that uses hundreds of or different um, uh, libraries or other sort of connected jars, then you will just, uh, so when you create a native application, you actually reference all of them saying that, hey, I'm using all of these things and they are situated there. So it will actually pull in, but when it actually do a aggressive static analysis, it will only include the ones that are 
sort of your uh, your execution path is touching. Rest of the dead code it will clear up. So <clears throat> again, um, the reason I'm not touching on that subject a lot because it has less to do with polyglot applications, but it's, it has more to do with ahead of time compilation. Uh, so a gentleman there, yeah. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay, let's let's so, go back. So, when you compiler, actually, how does it know that which one you to use? Sure. Okay. No problem. Uh, this one, right? Um, so we see these two, right? Yeah. So when when you you remember when I execute the code? So I said. Uh, I pass the command line uh, option of JVM. So when you pass JVM, it will run on hotspot. And uh, and then uh, if you use native, it will sort of use the native executable that was created by the native image and run it in on the substrate VM. Yeah. So native will run just to simplify it. I'm I'm oversimplifying few things just so that at least we can start, you guys can start with Graal. I don't want to confuse too much. So if it is JVM mode, then it will go here. If it is native mode, it will go here. Just put it this way. Um, uh, I need to sort of change this, uh, this picture a bit because uh, the JVM CI only impact the hot, hotspot VM side, not the substrate VM side. So slight change is needed. Okay, so I think that's a wrap. Some, okay, sorry. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah, please uh, do give me feedback. Uh, thank you so much.